Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that has been produced specially for you. Hey kids! Good morning! And welcome to the online service that's specially made for you with love. Love, yes! That's today's topic and we are here to learn more about love. Now all of us have heard the word love so many times. Yes, it is an emotion that we all understand and we may also think that we know everything there is to know about love. But is it children? Tell me children, what is the greatest love that you all have experienced? Now you can type your answers in the live chat. Go on, tell me what is the greatest love that you have experienced? Hmm, maybe when your mother hugged you when you're feeling really low or when you were sad or afraid and was feeling alone and you needed someone so your friend or your sibling or a cousin was with you was that the greatest love that you experienced or was it when your father defended you when mom was angry with you did you feel loved by your father then was that the greatest love that you experienced or was it the love of a teacher who encouraged you when no one could believe that you could do something? We've all experienced such things, right? And these are all beautiful examples of how love could have been expressed to us by the people in our lives. And they are something that we should all cherish. But the greatest demonstration or expression of love. Do you all know when children? Yes, the greatest demonstration and expression of love was on the cross. When Jesus died for us so that you and I could have eternal life. Now here's a quick question for all of you. We all know that the Bible speaks about love a lot correct and different kinds of love and in fact some people even call the bible a love letter from god to us now can any one of you tell me when is the word love first mentioned in the bible you know go ahead type in your answers in the live chat any guesses when was love first mentioned in the Bible? Go all the way back from the beginning. Yes, it's in Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 when God tells Abraham, Take your own son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. Now isn't that shocking children? There are so many things that happened in the Bible before Abraham. There was the creation, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel and there was Noah and his ark, the great flood. It had been 2008 years from the time of the creation, 20 generations had lived on earth. But the word love was first mentioned only in Abraham and Isaac's story. A story that shows sacrificial love. What is sacrificial love? Sacrificial love means that you love someone so much that you are willing to sacrifice something else that is very precious to you for that someone. Just like how Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac 
although it was so difficult for him to show his obedience to God but he was still willing to do so because of his love for God this first love in the bible was when a sacrifice was needed but God substituted Isaac whom Abraham loved so much with a lamb but the greatest love in the bible was when God substituted the lamb with the sacrifice of his own son's life on the cross for us now love starts with god his sacrifice our source of love is god and what he did for us on the cross god is love i would love to share more but before we go deeper into this topic let's all pray together let's close our eyes and pray lord we thank you for this good sunday morning and we thank you for the love you showed for us on the cross we ask for your help lord to be loving and that your love be the only language that we speak bless the service and let your love be poured out on all who are watching right now in jesus name i pray amen the word has said occurs around 250 times in the old testament it's the main term used to describe the love of god but this word hesed doesn't just mean love god's love is beyond what we think or know god's love is filled with mercy god's love is filled with kindness God's love is filled with goodness. God's love is filled with grace. God and God's love is filled with loyalty. Isn't it amazing that we have a God whose love is beyond what we could imagine? Well, if it's amazing, what are we waiting for? Let's stand, clap our hands, rejoice and praise God for his love. Good morning kids. I don't know if you remember the song, but we did this um at kids camp and if you don't remember it, just follow along, do the actions and I'm sure it'll come to mind. through those actions it's the line he is my strength okay so it's he is my strength he is my friend so when you're saying friend you hold the hand of the person next to you if there's no one you can just swing your hand like me but otherwise hold it bring it back up together and then you leave it and say for ever so he is my strength he is my friend for ever okay let's do that again
Thank you, God, that we can be secure in you and that even when it seems like we are alone, we are reminded that you, God of the universe, that you are with us and that you care for us. We know that God is the source of love and all the love that we have within us is only because God first loved us and showed us what love really is. So children, tell me what must we do with all the love that we have or with all the love that God has filled us with? Just sit and tell everyone around us that we are all loving people. No, we need to show it in action. We are called to love God and to love people. 
In fact, the greatest commandment given to us is to love God. And when we love God, we will love people. One day, when Jesus was in the temple teaching the people who were gathered there, a group of religious leaders began asking Jesus tricky questions just to embarrass him so that the people sitting over there, gathered there, would not listen to Jesus' teachings. Then one of the men asked Jesus, Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? So children, tell me, which one do you think Jesus said was the most important commandment? Go ahead and type in your answers in the live chat. Jesus replied, you must love the God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first, the greatest commandment. The second is equally important to love your neighbors as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. So children, let's understand what this verse of loving God with all our heart, mind and soul means. This is an important commandment, children, because every other commandment gets covered if we follow this one. When we love God with all our hearts, minds and souls, it means that we put God first in our lives and we will not love other things more than we love God. It means that we will only think and do good and right things that honor God. Now this big jar of colored water represents God. And these three glass tumblers represent our heart, mind and soul. Now the colored water inside these glass tumblers represent the love that we have in our heart and in our mind and in our soul. Did you notice children that the water in these tumblers is the same as the water that we have in this big jar? That is to show that we are made in the image of God. Now children, tell me. How can we love God? We love God by giving Him everything we have. But sometimes we give our love to other things. Here. For example, our friends. We have best friends and we love to do everything together with them. Sometimes even things that are not correct, but we still do those wrong things because we love our best friends so much and we want to make them happy. We love them even more than we love God. See, so we give our love to our best friends first. And then, because we love God too, we give part of our love to Him as well. Now, the mind. Do we always give our whole mind to God? Our mind is usually occupied with so many thoughts, isn't it children? We want to love God with all our mind, but it is so occupied by thoughts about the TV show that we just watched or about a song that keeps repeating in your head or just thinking of things that distract you and separate you from God. We end up being caught up in our thoughts and we forget about God. To love God with our mind is to honor him with our thoughts too so these things distract us and take us away from god that's how we give part of our mind to the things that don't please god give part of our mind that don't please god and then we know that we are supposed to love god with our mind so we give a little bit to god too next the soul what do we love with our soul? Maybe we are committed and we like doing good and helping others. But sometimes we don't have love when we help others. We only do it with the intention of being appreciated. And we want people to think that we are good. Or maybe sometimes we want to become famous. That's why we do good things for others. And then we give the remaining to God. Now let's see children, you see this big jar is not full. Did we give all our hearts, minds and soul to God? No, we gave some to others too. So here 
we have not followed the greatest and the most important commandment we must give all our hearts minds and soul to god first now children see it is full till the brim because we gave all our heart mind and soul to god so children we must make sure that in everything we do we need to give god the first place we must love god more than anything else in this world when we love god with all our hearts minds and souls we will do the right thing and we will think the right thoughts and we will make the right choices when we give our all to god god will pour out his love into every area of our lives he will fill your heart with his love he will fill your mind with his love he will fill your soul too and of course god will also give you everything else that you need and that interests you god will fill your hearts minds souls and he knows what you like he knows what you need he will give that to you as well he will fill you in every area of your life now children let's learn about loving our neighbors have you ever given or received a gift or a greeting card it feels amazing isn't it but when do we usually give or receive cards or gifts when there's a special occasion right imagine you gave a card to a friend every day or you told people that you love them every day it sounds hard right but god calls us to love our neighbors not just on special occasions like their birthday or on christmas but at all times now who are our neighbors people who stay next door yes but not only them our neighbors are people in the world are you confused okay think about it when you're at home your neighbors are the people who stay next door when you're in school your neighbor is your classmate sitting right next to you and when you're in a train or a bus or a flight your neighbor is the person sitting next to you when you live in a city your neighbors are all the people in the city surrounding your city and when you live in a country your neighbors are the people who live in the country surrounding your country so children when god said love your neighbors it just wasn't the people we know it was also the people whom we don't know and maybe we have never even met sometimes it is even people we may not like but what is the commandment to love your neighbor if you show them love by being kind by praying for them by helping them you are obeying god's commandment okay children are you ready for the activity have you all been paying attention to today's lesson let's check i will ask you a few questions and i want you to quickly type in your answers in the live chat section Are you ready for your first question? Question 1. Where does all the love that we have in our hearts come from? Who is the source of our love? That's right. The source of our love is God. We learn from God how to love in fact the bible tells us that we love because god first loved us question 2 the bible talks about who we should love very specifically who are they
tells us that the most important commandment is to love God. And the next important commandment is to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Question 3. We saw a verse that teaches us how we should love God. Do you remember the three things with which we should love God? With all of our blank space, with all of our blank space, with all of our blank space. us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. That was a very good recap. And thank you for participating. As usual, you did very well. The most beautiful way God has shown us His love is by dying for us on the cross. But Jesus did not die for nothing. He died and rose again so that we may gain our authority back. He has given us the power and authority to declare with our words the truth of the Bible. When we declare and believe it, we are exercising the power and authority that God earned for us on the cross. So, let's stand up. Hold your Bible high up in the air and make our declaration. Say this out loud, bold and strong with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word and I live by His word. Christ is my master and to Him I am in absolute surrender. I walk into the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the Spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry in the Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Wow! There is so much more to love than we thought there could be. Right children? Well, we all learned that God is the source of the love that we have right okay and we are to love god with all our heart our mind and our soul who else should we love children can you think about it yes we should love god and we should love our neighbors which means everyone around us we saw that right in the previous segment but how do we love everyone Right? Everyone tells us that we should love everyone, even the Bible tells us so. But do we have specific instructions on what is the correct kind of love? Of course we do. First, we'll read a passage from the Bible. Okay? Can you all open your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians? Yes. We will see what love is not. Okay? From verses 1 to 3. Do you all have your Bibles open? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We are going to first read from verses 1 to 3. Are you ready? Here it is. What does verse 1 say? Suppose I speak in the language of humans. Yes, human beings or of angels. If I don't have love, I am only a loud 
gong or a noisy cymbal. We may be people who have the gift of tongues or even the gift of a uh, spiritual all other spiritual gifts but if we don't show love to people if the people around us do not feel loved all our godliness is like a clanging cymbal like this oh my god god says that we are basically noisy people what does verse 2 say suppose i have the gift of prophecy suppose i can understand all the secrets of god and know everything i have prophecy i have the secrets of god i know everything about him and i have enough faith to even move mountains but i don't have love i am nothing at all god is saying all this doesn't matter well if i have prophecy i know all the mysteries of god we have a great revelation or have great faith to even move a mountain all that doesn't matter it is nothing it is as good as we have nothing at all without love right what is important what is important is love what is verse 3 say suppose i give everything i have to the poor people right and i give myself over to a difficult life i put myself through a lot of trouble so i can brag or i can boast about it if i don't have love i get nothing at all what about when i give money to the poor people who are really in need or wear fancy clothes or not wear fancy clothes have fancy toys or not have fancy toys because we want to be called good children or even brag or show off that we are not using fancy clothes we're giving money to people or show off that how good we are even that doesn't matter that is not true love that's not the love god is asking for so children our great faith our acts of sacrifice and our miracle working ability right produces It, it when it's produced with very little love or without love it's useless love is what makes our actions as gifts and useful when we do something with love is what that matters let's not be loud gongs or noisy symbols now let's see what is the real and the correct way to love okay children Let's look further. Let's read one Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four onwards, and we'll read all the way up till verse eight. It says, "Love is patient." This means that we are able to be calm and wait for a long time without becoming angry or irritated or anxious. For example, when you are the one person who's doing. all the chores in the house and your brother or your sister is getting away with not doing any chores in the house how do you feel then when it could be annoying and we just want to yell at them but we need to be patient and be doing all the work as mama or dada has asked us to so that we can show love What's the next verse? It says love is kind. This means being friendly, generous, understanding, polite, compassionate even when we don't feel like it. And more importantly, when we don't like the person, we have to show kindness. This is putting love in action. What's the next one? Love does not envy it means we don't have the feeling of jealousy or desire for someone else's things or qualities an example of envy is when a person says i want those no shoe new shoes that he has he always gets better shoes than mine well if you really are in love or you love the person what would you say hey your look shoes look great and i'm so happy you got them 
Another example of envy is when a person says she has more friends. Yeah. And you complain about it saying she has more friends than I do. What is a good way to say it or a loving way to face the situation? Well, she has more friends. Maybe I should get to know her better. Envy makes us feel negative about others. But when we act in love, we see ourselves and those around us the way God wants us to. What's the next one? Love does not boast. Right? This means we don't have pride and brag about our own achievements, possessions or ability. We just heard about how love is kind, love is patient and love does not envy. But love does not boast or love is not proud either. We don't do things and expect to be praised all the time. Love is being humble and not boastful or being proud. What's the next one? Love does not dishonor others. Right? That means we do not bring shame or disgrace to anyone. When we walk in love, we need to show our respect and honor to everyone. Our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, teachers and everyone no matter what. By honoring others, we honor God. That's right. What's the next one? Love is not self-seeking. That means we should not be selfish. We should not be concerned only of our, of our own welfare. And we have to put the interests of others before ours. We should always put others first. For example, when we see someone in school who has forgotten to bring her lunch, although we really are hungry, we have to put others' needs first. And maybe you can share your lunch with them. Right? Yes. What about the next one? Love is not easily angered. That means we cannot be annoyed or show irritation to anyone. When we do this, we are being unkind, unloving and we could end up hurting someone. Right? What's the next one? Love keeps no record of wrong. Wow, that's an interesting one. What does this mean? It means that if anyone has done you, wrong right we should not be people who hold on to it or have a grudge against them right and always remembering remember what she told me that day remember what she did to you that day right instead we should be people who forget the bad forgive the person even if the person is not asking for your for your um, a repentance he's not repenting and uh, he's not apologizing you should be the better person and not keep a record. Just like how Jesus forgives our sins and doesn't keep a record of it. What's the next one? Love does not delight in evil. That means we don't participate in bad things that are sinful and disobedient. We have to love God. In loving God, we do all that is right all times. Evil things include lying, cheating in exams, or competitions or stealing no what's the next one love rejoices in truth we are always happy in telling the truth right now what's the next one love always protects we have to protect our family members we should protect people around us. We should not harm them. We should also protect them from being harmed. Now, how about school? Are we children who bully our classmates? Or are we children who are friendly, who are kind and loving with our classmates and everyone else around us? We should ensure, yes, that our friends around us are being protected. Our family members around us are being protected. And we should be there to protect them, right? What's the next one? Love always trusts. That means that we believe people when they tell us something. Right? We trust people around us and always look for the best in people. 
we should not doubt our friends or uh, make fun of them when they uh, share an accomplishment of our of theirs they come and tell you something they accomplished you should trust them and trust your friends capabilities without a doubt right what's the next one love always hopes that means we always trust that god is good and trust that there's always good in everything we face we have hope because we have a great god that's right what's the last one love always perseveres that means we continue going on the right path what god has asked us to do even though we may not see the results that we want it may not it may feel like a very uh, tough choice right now right but we still persevere because god has asked us to love look how beautiful this is what's the last one it is remember children love never fails if you are a person who's full of love just like how god has asked us to be then love will never fail right and look what we made today we made a beautiful peacock all right now we're going to do a recap of what we learned right by opening up the peacock feathers what's the first one love is love is patient what's the next one love is kind what's the next one love does not envy that's right and what's the next one love does not boast that's right and what's the next one love is not proud excellent children and does not dishonor that's correct what's the next this one love is not self seeking absolutely and love is not easily angered that's right what is next this one love does not keep any record of wrong that's right and yes the love does not delight in evil what's the next one love rejoices in truth and the next I'm going to wait for you to read. Love always protects. Yes, and love always trusts and love always hopes and love always perseveres and love never fails. Wonderful. Finally, children, let's close the series on faith, hope and love. Right? with the last verse from 1 corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 what does it say it says three things will last forever what is that faith hope and love and the greatest of all these things is love now i'm sure you all know where we get our love from where do we get our love from we get it from jesus are you somebody who would like to experience the love of jesus and also would like to take this love further and give it to everyone around you well i am going to teach you a prayer today you can repeat this after me if you would like to accept jesus into your life jesus died for us on the cross why did he die for us on the cross because he loved us so much that he didn't want us to suffer for the sins that we commit here that's right so if you want to partake of the love of jesus and give love to everyone around you repeat this prayer after me let's close our eyes and repeat okay dear jesus i thank you for your love and thank you for all that you have done for me especially for dying for me on the cross i thank you for forgiving my sins i come to you asking for forgiveness and knowing that you will forgive me i thank you lord lord i welcome you into my life and ask that you become my loving god and my loving father Jesus I pray 
and believe that you are the only God and you died for me on the cross. And only through you, I can go to heaven and also show love to everybody around me. I ask that you fill me with love so that I will be a loving person in Christ. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's online service and we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you think. Write your comments in the live chat or send an email to kidsonline at apcwo.org. Also, don't forget to visit us online at apcwo.org dot org slash kids online we have fun activities and challenges for you to do remember if you do a good work and send it to us we may include it in our upcoming online services so make sure to go to apcwo dot org slash kids online and do one or more of these activities. We would love to meet with you and play with you immediately after the service. You can join us on Zoom for a quick catch up using the Zoom login ID and the password provided on the screen. Now before we close, is anyone's birthday coming up this week? Why don't you type in your name, birth, date and age in the live chat so that we as a team can wish you and pray blessings over you. Another thing, have you always had questions about the Bible, about Jesus or how to live for Jesus and didn't know who to ask? Why don't you email your questions to us and we'll do our best to answer it in an upcoming online service. The email to write to us is kidsonline at apcwo.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Now let's pray before we close. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we understood, that we realized that your love is steadfast. Your love is of kindness, is of mercy, is of grace. You are always good. And you enable us, Lord, to follow you, Lord, to follow your footsteps, to show that love to others, Lord, the same way as you have shown towards us unconditionally and steadfast Lord help us also father that we will show this love to those around us Lord that we will give you our best of oh, father God our first priority Lord we will love you with all our heart mind and soul of oh, father God you will be the first preference and the first one we choose in every part of our lives of oh, father God we also pray that you will give us the strength, Lord. You will fill our hearts with so much of love that it will overflow to those around us, Lord Jesus. That we will show, irrespective of what they have done and what they have not done, we will still love them, Lord. Help us to do the good things, Lord, out of love, Lord Jesus. Help us to have that servant-minded servant, servant attitude of oh, Father God. And I pray, Jesus, that each one of us, Lord, each one of us as uh, children and everyone bow down here, Lord, everywhere across the world, oh, Father God, whoever is joined in, in this online service, Lord, that they will 
have the deep conviction of your love of Father God, of know that a father's love is eternal, is, is for sure, is permanent and never failing Father. And I pray that all the children will be blessed of Father God. Help them to see your blessings of Father, to count your blessings of Father God. Help them to know that you are always there with them, Lord. When they are going out, when they are playing, when they are um, with their uh, friends, when they are on the online classes, when they are studying, Lord. Help them to be so deeply convinced that you are there right next to them, Father God. Listening to their every conversation, Father. Helping them, giving them the wisdom and the grace, oh, Father God. Especially during this time, we pray for your protection, for your um, uh, blood uh, covering over every child of oh, Father God. Help them to uh, seek you, Father God, for everything that is concerning their health, Lord. To follow all the uh, measures, of oh, Father, of being safe in this time, of oh, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take away every kind of uh, feelings and emotions that are not right, oh, Father God, that have come because of the circumstance. And giving your peace, giving, showing your love, Lord, through people and through uh, uh, those around them, oh Father God, that they will receive the love that they need, oh Father God. We thank you, Lord. Bless all the children during this week, oh Father God. Pray especially for those who are celebrating their birthdays in the coming week, oh Father God. Let your blessings be upon them, Father God. Help them, Lord Jesus, to see you like never before in the coming year, oh Father God. Thanking you for all your goodness that led them through this uh, past year, Lord, that they will still trust you in you, Lord, hope in you, Father, that in the coming year also you will enable them to be, um, to be in good health, Lord Jesus, and in good cheer, oh, Father God. We thank you and bless you, Father, because we believe and ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. And all children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, children. Bye. See you next week. I hope you all have a loving week. Bye. I'll see you all next time. Bye children. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye everyone. See you all next Sunday. Remember, God loves you.